Welcome everybody, my name is Aaron Barrera and I am an applications engineer for Texas Instruments brushless DC motor drivers. Today, I will be comparing the various types of commutation methods for three-phase brushless DC motors. Let's begin. In this video, we'll discuss the reasons for choosing a specific commutation method over another, as well as the advantages and disadvantages for the four main commutation methods, trapezoidal 120 degrees, trapezoidal 150 degrees, sinusoidal 180 degrees, and field-oriented control. There are many different ways to spin a three-phase brushless DC motor, ranging in efficiency and complexity. Before discussing them, it is important to know what factors are to be considered before choosing a computation method. The first main factor of consideration should be the motor construction. Brushless DC motors can be wound trapezoidally or sinusoidally, the back EMF waveform generated by sinusoidal and trapezoidal motors are different. To maximize torque and efficiency, the current driving the motor should match the shape of the back EMF waveform. Another factor to consider is the application, which can be categorized into torque, position, and speed. Some commutation methods are well suited for certain applications, while they may be very not well suited for others. Finally, Solutions can vary based on solution availability. Drivers and systems may or may not integrate control, MOSFETs, interface to sensors, or other circuits. Computation methods range from simple to complex, which may require extra hardware or software to achieve desired performance. Additionally, application requirements like acoustic performance or speed may dictate a certain commutation type. The four main commutation methods are trapezoidal 120 degrees, trapezoidal 150 degrees, sinusoidal 180 degrees, and field-oriented control. Many times, the, the methods are nicknamed TRAP120, TRAP150, SIN180, and FOC. These methods range in complexity, cost, and board space. An external MCU may or may not be needed to implement commutation and software. Each waveform depicted on the slide represents the current when driving the windings of the brushless DC motor. As you progress from trapezoidal to sinusoidal, each waveform becomes more smooth in shape but gets progressively more difficult to generate the profile. Each commutation method provides advantages and disadvantages in implementation and performance. We will discuss each of these methods further in depth and their trade-offs. Let's begin with 120 degree trapezoidal commutation. This is the most basic method of brushless DC motor commutation. By driving current through the windings of the stator, magnetic fields are induced on the permanent magnet rotor to apply a force. By energizing the windings in a six-step pattern, the motor will begin to spin. The phases are electrically switched every 60 degrees so that one phase is 100% on, another phase is 100% off, and the last phase remains unconnected. Every phase is energized for two 60-degree segments, which is 120 electrical degrees. As a result, the current waveforms produce a trapezoidal pattern, which gives trapezoidal commutation its name. Each phase current is either positive, negative, or zero during each 60 degree interval. The high Z phase is often referred to as a window when using sensorless technology. When commutating the motor, you must note the position of the rotor to energize what the next state is in order to keep the motor commutating. We will discuss how to determine the motor position in the next slides. The advantages to using trapezoidal control are, it is low cost, low power, and simple to implement. Additionally, TRAP allows motors to spin at high speeds and deliver high torque because it applies maximum allowable voltage through the windings when energizing. In terms of disadvantages, TRAP creates a torque ripple due to a non-ideal current drive. This causes audible noise. Now, it makes sense to talk about censored and sensorless control at a high level and how it applies to each of the different commutation methods. We'll begin first with censored control. In order to detect motor position, many sensors can be used, such as encoders, resolvers, and hall sensors. Hall sensors are popular because they are an easy to use sensor to detect the changing magnetic fields of the permanent magnet on the rotor. When a change in polarity is detected, they will change output from low to high or high to low to indicate a change in commutation state. Three Hall sensors will yield six unique states, which can be used to determine a commutation pattern. Hall sensors can be used in torque, speed, or position control applications since they can detect exactly where the rotor is. 
The main advantage to using hall sensors is that it is a low cost, easy to implement solution that gives immediate motor position, even at slow speeds or rest. The disadvantages to hall sensors are that they are a low resolution solution compared to encoders and resolvers, and they require space on the board or on the motor itself to function. Now let's talk about sensorless control. Sensorless control can potentially remove the need for external sensors by measuring the back EMF zero crossings or calculating the back EMF generated during commutation. When a motor is spinning, the undriven winding experiences a back EMF voltage due to the changing magnetic field across the coil of wire. The voltage changes polarity during the high Z period or window and creates a zero crossing. By identifying the zero crossing point in the window, we can deduce the rotor position and determine how to commutate the motor. If there isn't a window to measure back EMF, then it has to be calculated internally using, using known motor parameters. Typically, sensorless control is used for speed applications since the motor will generate enough back EMF when it is spinning at a constant speed. The main advantage to sensorless control is saving board space and mechanical complexity by eliminating the need for sensors. However, it is not operable at low speeds because back EMF generated is too small to measure. Sensorless techniques require additional signal chain elements and or calculations to operate, adding hardware or software complexity. Continuing with 150 degree trapezoidal control, Trap 150 is often referred to as pseudo-sinusoidal. The phase voltages are energized for 150 electrical degrees rather than 120 electrical degrees, resulting in a longer on time to lessen the torque ripple and create a more sinusoidally shaped current waveform. Phase voltages can be actually energized for up to 170 electrical degrees using a similar method, but the longer the phases are energized, the narrower the high Z window becomes. Pseudo-sinusoidal commutation schemes are typically used with sensorless control so that a window is always open to measure the back EMF zero crossings. Advantages to using trapezoidal 150 are that the solution is still low cost. It has better noise acoustics and efficiency compared to trapezoidal 120 when operating on a sinusoidal motor. The disadvantages are that the system still has worse acoustics than a pure sinusoidal commutation and there will still be torque ripple. Next, let's discuss sinusoidal control. To make the motor spin smoothly, sinusoidal commutation eliminates hard current switching produced from trapezoidal commutation. By having a sinusoidal current waveform, which spans 180 electrical degrees, this optimizes the performance of sinusoidally wound brushless DC motors. To produce sinusoidal current in the phase windings, a McDonald voltage waveform is produced. When these waveforms are commutated in the pattern shown, it creates a smooth 180 degree sinusoidal current for each phase shifted every 120 electrical degrees. A McDonald waveform is generated by pulse width modulation or PWM on the motor phases. Sinusoidal control can be used in censored and sensorless applications. Hall sensors can be used to determine when to generate the PWM voltage profile for each phase. The Hall sensor output can be used to determine the electrical frequency, which can be used to calculate the motor speed. Alternatively, a sensorless approach can be implemented by calculating the back EMF generated in the motor using known motor parameters. You cannot directly measure the back EMF because there is no longer a high Z in the drive waveform. One method to implement sensorless sinusoidal control is to use a first order differential equation of the circuit by using current, winding inductance, winding resistance, and motor voltage, we can calculate the back EMF and determine when the back EMF makes a zero crossing. You can find sinusoidal control in speed applications since they require low noise, smooth, and efficient motor performance. Sinusoidal control provides many advantages in comparison to trapezoidal computation. The motor performance is very quiet, highly efficient, and produces a very small torque ripple. In terms of downsides, sinusoidal control is more difficult to implement because more tightly controlled PWM is required, there are higher switching losses compared to trap commutation, and there is an increased complexity as described in sensorless techniques. Finally, 
The last control method is Field Oriented Control, or FOC. FOC is a PWM modulation technique that maximizes the torque in the motor by controlling the stator current so that it is always perpendicular to the rotor flux. It is an improved version of sinusoidal commutation that dynamically modulates the PWM volt varying voltages of the three phases to maximize motor power and efficiency, and while minimizing torque ripple and noise. To make the stator current perpendicular to the rotor flux, a series of mathematical transformations are used to convert three-phase stator currents to direct, or parallel, and quadrature, or perpendicular, stator currents. First, phase currents IU, IV, and IW are transformed to two-phase stator currents I-alpha and I-beta using a Clark transform. Position and speed can be calculated from these currents or measured using an encoder. Next, these currents are transformed into in-phase direct and quadrature currents ID and IQ using a park transform with respect to the rotor position. These currents are now in rotating reference frames. A Pi controller is used to ensure that maximal torque is applied perpendicular to the rotor in the ID vector. Some complex FOC implementations also adjust current in the direct rotor for the purposes of field weakening and other advanced algorithms. Finally, the controller output vol outputs voltages VD and VQ, and inverse Clark and Park transforms are used to convert back into the three-phase reference frame. The modulated PWM phase voltages VU, VV, and VW feed back into the inverter to drive the motor. Field-oriented control can be used for speed, torque, or position applications since it is a versatile control technique that maximizes many motor performance parameters. Using FOC has many advantages over the previous commutation techniques mentioned, including the highest power output, lowest noise, minimal torque ripple, maximum motor speed through field weakening, and maximum motor efficiency. FOC is especially useful in applications with dynamic loads because the FOC control method maximizes torque regardless of motor position. In terms of disadvantages, FOC requires significant computation complexity that requires a fast microcontroller that can perform trigonometric functions and many floating point calculations quickly. This is especially difficult if FOC is implemented sensorlessly. If position and speed are estimated sensorlessly from the two phase data currents, the microcontroller must be fast enough to calculate the angle and velocity as the motor spins. This may require the use of real-time digital signal processors to pipeline these math calculations or implement large lookup tables while the rest of the transformations are simu simultaneously being calculated. The modulated PWM output will result in higher switching losses compared to trapezoidal commutation. Finally, FOC requires coding experience to discreetly implement PI controllers, interrupts, and calculations. To find more motor driver technical resources and search products, visit ti.com slash motor drivers. Thank you for watching.